Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here and today I'm back with Create8 where I will be creating 8 cards using products from the latest release by my favorite things. For my first card I cut out this uh, red panel and this is by the way from an older die set that's Blueprint 31 and uh, as you can see I have cut out a red one and a white one and what I am doing here is totally optional I want to have some red stripes that are exactly the same uh, size but of course you can use your paper trimmer to do so I'm just using this uh, die which comes from a previous release by my favorite things just to show you another way on how you can use these type of dies and make the most out of them. Now I am using glue at the back of uh, these red strips of paper and I'm going to stick them on top of my white panel. And as you can see I have uh, cut out a template for myself using the same uh, die just to make sure that all those uh, red uh, strips of paper are uh, nicely aligned and uh, have a nice distance in between them. And of course you can uh, go ahead and uh, make the same look if you have uh, a patterned paper with uh, red stripes or uh, you can uh, stamp uh, a line stamp uh, again and again or uh, you can even uh, just use your marker and draw some uh, lines. I just love the dimension that you get when you stick card to stock on top of cardstock. So anyway, I am uh, continuing and here is uh, where I am creating my focal point for my card. So I am using uh, the stamp set You Float My Boat and I am stamping one of the boats. I am using Blueberry um, ink by My Favorite Things. And uh, for the top part of my boat I need to be a little bit creative. So I am going to use the tie, uh, drop inside the top part of my boat, making sure that uh, it fits nicely inside the die. So now I know exactly where it is going uh, to cut out, since um, it is very easy to stamp those sails uh, uh, very far up. So when uh, you go ahead and uh, try to cut out with the die, it's not going to fit perfectly. I hope that makes sense. So now I can go ahead and uh, place my die there. I'm going to run it through my Sizzix machine and then at the end I'm going to stamp the flag just where it fits. Now I'm going to create a banner out of this blue cardstock. So I need to make sure that this is going to fit uh, my uh, boat nicely. And I'm going to use my scissors to create a fish tail at the bottom. So now I have my banner ready to go. I am going to stamp the sentiment and for that I am going to use my Versa marking. I stamped one of the sentiments from the same stamp set that says you float my boat. So I am going to apply white embossing powder, heat set it. And now I am using my crocodile to create two holes at each side of uh, my banner and then I am going to set some eyelets. I am going with gold for the eyelets. Now I have some uh, rules that I always follow when I try to create nautical cards. So I always like to have blue and red and white as colors. I always want to have a touch of uh, gold on my cards and I always like to incorporate somehow some string. And you can see on screen right now my recipe for nautical cards. So I have a thread through the string. I'm going to wrap it all around my striped panel. And uh, I'm also going to make sure that um, the banner or the flag is uh, nicely attached on top of my panel. And I'm going to tie a bow on one side of uh, that uh, panel. So my panel is ready to go. I'm going to stick that on top of a card base. My card base is a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. It is a top folding card and it's exactly the same color of blue as the blue banner on top of my panel. Now let's move on to the second card for today and I am going for a underwater scene. I'm working with my Distress Oxide inks and uh, I am using three colors. You can see the colors I used on your screen right now. I'm applying the ink with my blending tools and I'm going from lighter to darker and I really don't uh, worry if it doesn't blend at the moment. This is the first layer and Distress Oxide ink blends beautifully. You will see that it's going to be super smooth at the end. So now I'm going back again over what I have uh, done for my first layer and now you see how nicely everything blends in. So now I have a nice uh, background for my underwater scene. 
I'm spraying a little bit of water. Hope you can see the droplets there. I'm going to leave them for a while so that uh, the ink is going to oxidize. And uh, then I'm going to blot everything with a towel. And I repeated this process a couple of times until I got uh, nice uh, droplets there since I like uh, the result of the reaction with water and distress oxidings. So now I am going to work on uh, my focal points. I am using the stamp set Ocean Fan and I am going to stamp the jellyfish. There are two different uh, designs of that and I am going to use different distress oxide inks to stamp them. As you can see distress oxide inks, unlike distress uh, ink, stamps beautifully and I get a nice crisp image. I am going to stamp uh, four times but I ended up uh, using only three of those jellyfish. I'm going to use the matching dies to cut them out and uh, as you can see they don't have eyes at the moment but I'm going to stamp them later on. There are actually tiny little uh, stamps for eyes just next to each uh, fish so I'm going to stamp them with black and this gives them character. You can uh, stamp them uh, close to the center or at the top or, or looking right or left and I think this uh, makes them really fun. Now in the matching dies you get this die that cuts out a wave and I'm going to place that at the very top of my panel and cut it out. Now this was not uh, big enough for the whole uh, top but I'm going to use my scissors and just snip only the ends of it. So now I have my ocean ready to go. Now I'm going to decide where my jellyfish are going to stay. I'm going to add some uh, foam squares at the back and stick them down. And since I don't want my jellyfish to be all alone in that uh, big ocean, I'm going to stamp a school of fish at the back. And uh, for that I'm using the darkest distress oxide ink that I used for the background. So they look like shadows and as if they are far away at the background. I'm also going to stamp some seaweeds at the very bottom. And this comes from another stamp set from a previous release. And now I'm happy with how my panel is looking. I am going to stamp the sentiment. I'm working directly on my card base and I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from the same stamp set that say I'm so jelly but I'm super happy for you. So now I'm going to stick my panel on top and I used foam squares at the back. You know I love dimension. And to finish it off I'm going to use my white gel pen and add some uh, dots at the center of their eyes as well as use my glitter pen and add some shine all over my jellyfish. And let's move on to the third card and for this card I'm going for a very girly card. I'm going to use this little fairy and this comes from the stamp set that is called uh, Fairy Happy. I am going to stamp one of the little fairies there and uh, I am using a black licorice ink by my favorite things because this is alcohol marker friendly and today I'm planning to use my Nouveau alcohol markers to try them out since I didn't have a chance to try them. I do have the whole collection. I'm going to try them for a few uh, days and then I'm going to make a review. So as you can see my little fairy is ready to go. I have also used the matching dies to cut her out and now I'm uh, using a white panel and distress oxide inks again with my blending tool and I'm going to cover it up completely. And notice how I'm not uh, trying to make it super flat. You, you see that I do get some uh, cloud effects here and there which are actually good because this is not going to look as flat. Otherwise I could also use uh, a, just a pink cardstock. So now I'm going to spray again to add some splashes at the background which are going to give more interest on my background. And my panel is ready to go. So this is my sky and in my fairy world the sky can be pink. So I'm also going to use these uh, new dyes. They have uh, stitching all around and I'm going to cut out some white clouds. To make my little fairy pop even more against the background, I'm going to use this uh, ray stencil. This comes from uh, my favorite things from a previous collection. Again, I'm using the exact same color of uh, Distress Oxide ink and I'm going over it. I'm not going to go all over the stencil, I just want to have a few rays just where my little girl is going to stay. I'm also going to stamp this uh, trail at the back of my fairy and I used again the same Distress Oxide ink just because I wanted that line to be very subtle. 
I am adding some foam tape at the back of my fairy and I'm going to stick here on top of my panel. And then I am going to complete my scene by sticking down the clouds that I already have cut out. And uh, for the clouds I went uh, directly with glue tape at the back, so only the fairy sticks out. On a piece of uh, white cardstock I have stamped uh, the sentiment from the stamp set that says have a very happy birthday. And I also used my scissors to create a fish tail on one end. I'm going to uh, stick down the last cloud for my card. And I'm going to stick my panel on top of a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I decided to go with a white card so that I get a nice white border that uh, matches perfectly with the clouds as well as the sentiment. Now for a fairy card you need to add some glitter. And uh, since this is going to a little girl for her birthday, I am going to add some white glitter on her wings as well as on the clouds. For that I'm using my Nouveau glue pen. I'm going to add glue all over the clouds on her wings. I'm going to let it dry because this becomes sticky when it dries. And then I'm applying my glitter and the glitter is going to stick only where that uh, glue has dried and it's sticky. So on the clouds and on her wings. And here's a close-up look where you can hopefully see the shine which is so difficult to catch on camera. And just because the previous card was so girly, let's make a card that you can easily give to a man if you wish. So I am going to use the stamp set that is called Owl You Do. And there are uh, five different designs of owls in this uh, stamp set and I am going to use all of them. I'm going to stamp them. I'm using my Misty to do so. Now of course you can use your favorite method, you can even use your alcohol markers to color the, the owls, but I decided to make a quick and easy card and for that I decided to color everything with my Distress inks. And just because I didn't want uh, the eyes to become colored, I want to keep them white, I am going over them with my Nouveau Clear Drops. This is going to dry clear and you can uh, use your glossy accents to do the exact same thing. So this is going to give some shine on the eyes but at the same time it's going to resist distress ink. Now the eyes are all dry, I'm using my finger dabber and I'm going to apply color all over the owls. Just because I want to keep everything uh, quick and simple, I'm not going to do any blending, I'm just using one color for each owl. Once everything was colored, I used the matching dyes to cut them out and you can see them all here as I am popping them out of uh, the cardstock. Now everything is uh, really flat, I'm going to show you a very quick uh, way to add some shadows. I'm going to use Distress Ink and that's a uh, tea dye and I'm just going to add with my finger dabber a little bit of uh, this ink at the very bottom of the owls. So you can see the owls end up having a little bit of shadow at the bottom as if I have spent hours and hours coloring. I'm also going to use an orange marker to add a touch of orange on their peaks and the owls are ready to go. Now for the background I'm working on a craft uh, panel here as you can see and I am going to use the new stencil from my favorite things. I'm going to use tea dye and applying it with my finger dabber. I am not going to cover up the whole background, I just have, want to have a little bit of interest here and there. Before I go ahead and stick my focal points on top of my panels, I always play a little bit around to decide where everything is going to go. So now I'm ready to stick them down. I'm using foam squares for some of the owls and for some others I'm going to stick them directly on top of my card. This way I am going to have some layers. So for example the uh, orange one has two layers of foam tape at the back, so it's way at the front. The red and the yellow have only one layer of foam tape and uh, for uh, the green and blue I'm going directly on top of the panel with some uh, uh, tape adhesive at the back. Now of course you can uh, use uh, any of uh, the old designs and stamp even more of them and uh, if you want to, especially if you want to add them all the way to the top or if you want to complete the rainbow color order. So I am uh, happy with how this is looking at the moment. I'm going to flip my card at the back. I'm using my scissors to cut out the excess. And just because I love finishing touches, I am using my white gel pen, adding some highlights here and there on my owls. 
And since this is uh, going to be a happy birthday card, I went uh, with the sentiment from the same stamp set that says, Happy birthday to who? Happy birthday to you. And again, I'm going to use a brown ink, since I don't want this to be very vibrant. And it blends nicely with uh, the brown of the cardstock, as well as the brown inking on the background. So I'm going to stick that with some tape adhesive on top of a chocolate brown uh, cardstock. And I think this is perfect to give to a man or a girl. And just because I am usually struggling with masculine cards and I always have a more girly ones on my stash, I decided to go with another one that you can give to a boy or a girl, just because I need to have some of them on hand. So I have stamped this Leopard from the stamp set which is called uh, Lovable Leopards and they sure are and I'm using my alcohol markers to color everything. I also used the matching dye to cut out my animal and here is where I am creating my background and for that I want to go with a background that looks like a sunset so for that I'm going to use my distress inks, the old, good old distress inks, these are not uh, oxide inks and um, I'm going to use a combination of three inks from lighter to darker and you can see the colors that I'm using right now on your screen. I used foam tape at the back of my leopard and I'm going to stick him on top of my panel making sure that one end just goes outside uh, one edge so this way it's not look, it doesn't look as if uh, that uh, branch is floating on the air now I'm going to add some uh, tape adhesive at the back of my panel and I'm going to stick it on top of my chocolate cardstock this is a leftover I had from the previous card I stamped the sentiment with black ink and it says I spot a great friend and to finish off my card I'm going to add some shine with my glitter pen. Now for this card I'm going to combine two of uh, my most favorite things from this release and that's the tie that I'm using here which is the porthole uh, die and I'm going to combine it with a stamp set that is called Party Like a Pirate. So I have cut out a hole out of this pattern paper that I, has, I had in my stash forever and I used that just because it features the wood grain design at the front. So I'm going to cover up the bag with acetate, I'm going to cut out the excess and I'm going for a shaker card here and this is going to be a very complicated card with lots of steps but it's going to look gorgeous at the end. Now for the porthole border I want to use the die with uh, this uh, gold cardstock just to add a touch of shine and uh, I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and then I'm going to stick it all around that hole that I already have cut out on my panel. And I think it is looking gorgeous already. Now for the focal points I'm going to stamp the pirate, the parrot, the chest, some of uh, the coins as well as the Jolly Rogers and I'm going to color everything with my alcohol markers. And before I used the matching dies to cut out everything I wanted to show you that you can use your gel pens to add some shine on different parts of the images but at the same time you can add shadows with them. So I am adding uh, gold in uh, different parts like uh, the handle of his uh, sword as well as the coins and uh, the lock of the treasure chest. And I'm also adding uh, a touch of orange on one side which I am blending out with the gold and it really works. So uh, I do have shine on these parts of my images and um, they are really awesome but I, it is so hard to catch on camera. So anyway, I'm going to continue. I run them through my die cutting machine with the matching dies. And now I'm going to add the sentiment at the very bottom of my panel. For that I went with You are the captain of my heart. I stamped that with Versa marking and I'm going to white emboss it. And then all around that sentiment I'm going to stick all my cutouts. Now for these cutouts I'm not going with uh, a foam adhesive at the back just because this is going to be a shaker card it is going to have enough bulk already so you don't need extra. Now I'm going to stick the parrot on top of my chest, my treasure chest and by sticking them on top of uh, the sentiment it really provides them a ground so they don't look as if they are floating all over the place. 
Now I have this piece of white cardstock, this is just a scrap of cardstock that I am covering up with my Distress Oxide ink and this is going to be the back for my porthole. So I have added some uh, Distress Oxide ink there, I am uh, spraying with water just to create some splashes and splotches here and there. And then I am going to stamp some uh, fish so that um, it doesn't look so empty. I am adding my shaker mix at the, my, the porthole uh, window and now I'm going to cover it up with the back that I have already created. So if I turn it there, I hope you can see the beauty and hopefully that uh, mix that I have inside looks as if they are bubbles at the background. And if I had to choose just one of all the eight cards that I made today, this would be de definitely my favorite. And since all the cards that I made up to here were quite involved and difficult to make with lots of steps, I am going for a very clean and simple and quick uh, design. So I am just going to use my stencil here and I am going over it with my brushes and some Nouveau Mousse. You can apply it with a spatula if you wish so and it's going to become more uh, dimensional but I decided to just go with my brushes and you can see on your screen right now the three colors that I am using. I started with lemon, went to green and then to aquamarine and uh, you will see that they blend beautifully together and they add a beautiful shine. And now I am happy with the amount of uh, Nouveau Mousse that I have applied over my stencil. So I'm going to peel off the, the stencil for the big reveal. And I hope you can see how shiny it is. I'm going to try and catch the light for you. It's really beautiful. I'm going to leave this aside to dry. And uh, now that everything is dry, I'm going to use these uh, happy greetings from uh, the latest release by my favorite things. And I'm going with the word hello. I'm going to place it at the bottom of my panel. I run it through my die cutting machine. And now I am going to pop out all the letters. I'm going to hold on to this um, little uh, inside of the letter O because I will be using it later on. And for my card base, I'm going to use this gorgeous cardstock. Uh, this is a standard card, by the way, just like everything else I am doing. That's four and a quarter by five and a half. It is a top folding card, and I'm going to stick uh, my panel on top of my card. And I want you to see how I rub my finger over the mousse, and you see it doesn't smudge or smear, and it doesn't come off to my fingers. So it uh, really is permanent once it dries. I get this question a lot, so I just wanted to show you this. Now I'm going to place the inside of the letter O and I used the letter as a template just to make sure that I stick that correctly. And if you wish, you can go ahead and add uh, gems or pearls or even uh, glue drops at uh, those white spots just to embellish your card a little bit more. I decided to go with gems just for the three of uh, the lines at the top, yeah, but you can go ahead and go crazy with those. And let's move on to the last card for today. I'm working on a white panel and I'm going to use dies from the Color Drops die set. There are actually six dies in this set and I'm going to use the third one from the smallest ones. And I'm going to go around it so you can see that I have already cut out three of them. Now I'm going to use the word happy from the habit greetings. I'm going to place it there and secure it. And then at the bottom I'm going to create the exact same design as I did at the top. And to create this design, I had to use this die again and again, so I had to run this panel a few times through my die cutting machine. So now at the back, I'm going to add some tape adhesive and I'm going to place an acetate since I am going for a shaker card. And the word happy, as it is, it is perfectly readable, but if um, it bothers you to not have the insides of the letter A and uh, P, you can also go ahead and uh, add them just like I did. Now at the back I have added some foam tape all around the frame, but I want to cover up uh, the back of the word happy so it stands out even more. So I am using a yellow cardstock and you can see how it looks now and just there I am going to add some foam tape as well. 
And by doing so, I'm just actually creating two different compartments when, where I can add my shaker mix. Now, at the back, I'm going to add uh, some of these uh, yellow shaker mix that I have. I don't need to add too much. And uh, I'm going to peel off the backing and stick this um, uh, patterned paper that I have in my stash. It actually has uh, little uh, ice creams and um, I think it's perfect for a summer card. And finally, I'm going to stick that on a yellow standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And here is a quick look on all the cards that I made for today using the June release by my favorite things. Don't forget that you can find the full list of all the supplies that I used today down below in the description area as well as on my blog. And here are some close-up looks of all the cards that I made. So these were the cards for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired and if you did don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more videos that I created a while back. Thank you all for watching and have a lovely weekend!